Now, it's not unfair to say that horror typically has a more liberal approach to continuity than most other movie genres, given the tendency for hit horror films to spawn a glut of sequels which contort the overarching mythology in increasingly credibility-straining ways. And you know what? That's basically fine, though there are certainly instances of filmmakers introducing retcons to the franchise's lore which are soundly rejected by audiences at large. And that's what we're here to talk about today as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 horror movie retcons that everybody hated. Number 10. Laurie is Michael's sister, Halloween 2. It's no secret that pretty much everybody loathes Halloween Resurrection's infamous retconning of Michael Myers' death, but the franchise's original Sin retcon actually happened over 20 years earlier in Halloween 2. The sequel sees Michael once again pursuing Laurie following her survival in the first film, but in an attempt to raise the stakes and give their conflict a more personal flavour, Michael's reason for pursuing Laurie is retconned. You see, Halloween 2's big twist is that Laurie is Michael's younger sister, who was adopted by the Strodes after the death of her and Michael's parents. It remains a hugely controversial retcon to this very day because while the original Halloween implied that the shape was a relentless force of nature driven purely by his need to kill, Halloween 2 gave him a more specific, even relatable motive, which in turn stripped away much of his terrifying ambiguity. The sibling twist led to a glut of sequels centred around Michael hunting down Laurie and her bloodline, though this was itself retconned in 2018's Halloween film, which disregarded every prior sequel and stated that the sibling revelation was simply a rumour that somebody made up. Number 9. Logan is the original Jigsaw Apprentice Jigsaw Given that the original run of Saw movies ended with the seventh part, Saw, the final chapter, the mere existence of a belated eighth movie, Jigsaw, made it pretty damn likely a franchise elongation retcon was going to happen. Though Jigsaw managed to semi-cleverly bring the original Jigsaw, aka John Kramer, back into the fold by secretly setting a large chunk of the movie in the past, the subsequent twist ultimately dropped a nasty retcon that the fanbase soundly rejected. You see, it's eventually revealed that the new Jigsaw killer operating in the present day is pathologist Logan Nelson, but he's not merely a Jigsaw copy copycat, he's in fact the very first Jigsaw apprentice who predates all the others. Logan was one of Kramer's first test subjects ten years earlier, and was ultimately recruited to work under him, though he seemingly remained inactive until deciding to take up the Jigsaw mantle for the modern game. For starters, this was the third time the series had pulled the secret apprentice card, and expecting fans to accept that there was another person helping Kramer prior to the others required a tectonic suspension of disbelief. And beyond all of this, the fact that Logan had basically been radio silent until reappearing in Jigsaw just made it seem that much much more forced and contrived. The fan reception to the film was middling enough that Logan wasn't mentioned at all in the follow-up film Spiral. As for whether he'll show up in the upcoming Saw X, said to be set between the first two movies, well, we'll just have to wait and see. Number 8. Roman was behind Billy and Stu. Scream 3. Scream 3's big twist is, of course, that Ghostface is Stab 3 filmmaker Roman Bridger, who is actually Sydney's half-brother born to her mother Maureen. It's then revealed that Roman attempted to make contact with Maureen four years prior, but when she rejected him due to his conception being the result of sexual abuse, he began covertly filming her promiscuous sexual activity, including capturing her affair with Billy Loomis's father. Roman then showed this footage to Billy, prompting him and Stu to kill Maureen, which in turn led to the events of both prior Scream movies. Basically, Scream 3 installed Roman as the architect of the entire original trilogy, and considering how rarely these it-was-me-all-along retcons go, it unsurprisingly went down like a lead balloon with fans. Many felt like it robbed Billy of his own murderous agency in the first Scream, and beyond that, it simply made the chain of events in the first three movies seem considerably more contrived. And on top of that, Roman just isn't a particularly compelling ghost face, and also a damn unsatisfying puppet master villain. Number 7. The Seal of Metatron – Silent Hill Revelation 2006's pretty good adaptation of the hit survival horror game Silent Hill ended with Rose and her adopted daughter Sharon seemingly leaving Silent Hill, only to discover that they're still trapped in the foggy Silent Hill world, separated from their husband and father respectively, who's played by Sean Bean. It was an intriguing cliffhanger that unfortunately wasn't followed up on for an entire six years. But once the rather terrible Silent Hill revelation finally came out, many fans wish the filmmakers just didn't bother. Revelation opens by revealing that Sharon, now named Heather, did indeed manage to escape Silent Hill to be reunited with with her father. When Rose used one half of a talisman called the Seal of Metatron to free her at the cost of keeping herself trapped in the town. The Seal of Metatron is ultimately an element featured in the Silent Hill video games, yet this movie also acts like anyone who watched the first movie should also be familiar with it, despite it not appearing in that film at all. The filmmakers effectively moved the goalpost and rewrote the first film's ending in an attempt to cling more eagerly to the source material, yet it really just left hardcore and casual fans alike incredibly confused. And worse still, this is far from the only retcon in the movie, but it is the most egregious one which viewers are bludgeoned with right at the start of the sequel. Number 6. The Doll Is Actually Possessed Brahms The Boy 2 
2016's The Boy was by no means a particularly good horror film, but it did deliver a genuinely potent and unexpected twist ending. The film saw American nanny Greta hired to care for Brahms, a porcelain doll who served as a stand-in for the real Brahms, a boy who apparently died in a fire 20 years earlier. Now We're led to believe that the doll is possessed by Brahms, but we eventually learned that he actually survived the fire and has been living inside the mansion's walls ever since. The movie ends with the doll shattered but Brahms surviving his ordeal, and so when a sequel was announced, it seemed only natural that we'd see the very much human Brahms back again. Yet Brahms the boy too commits one of the strangest and most unnecessary retcons in horror movie history and ditches the flesh and blood Brahms and introduces the possessed doll angle which was so brilliantly subverted in the first film. It's a pointless change which pissed off fans of the original and likely contributed to the sequel grossly underperforming at the box office. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes it seems. Number 5. The Broken Timeline – Omen 3 – The Final Conflict Omen 3 The Final Conflict takes place when the Antichrist Damien Thorne is now 32 years of age, with the story taking place in 1982. Except this makes no sense at all considering that the original Omen film released in 1976 when Damien was just 5 years of age and is also clearly supposed to be set around the mid-70s due to the cars, fashion, technology and so on. Damien Omen 2 released in 1978 takes place 7 years after the events of the first movie when Damien is 12 years old, placing it around 1982, so it makes no immediate sense for Omen 3 to also be set in 19. 82. Basically, Omen 3 pushed Damien's date of birth back to 1950, around 20 years before his implied birth date in the original film, and hoped that nobody would notice or care. But it certainly annoyed fans who picked up on it, and is evidently the result of poor planning, that the filmmakers just didn't consider the possibility of releasing a sequel with a decades-old Damien so soon after the first one was also released. Number 4. The Space Jockey's Body is Actually a Suit Prometheus the Alien franchise has had its fair share of questionable retcons over the years, but one that perhaps angered the Ride or Die fans the most, well, it's changing the space jockey's physiology. Early on in Ridley Scott's original Alien, the crew of the Nostromo find the fossilized, chest-bursted remains of a gigantic alien lifeform in the derelict spaceship, which the production and later fans nicknamed the Space Jockey. Its origins fascinated fans for decades due to both its towering physical appearance and the fossilization implying that it had been there for a long, long time. But Prometheus retconned the Space Jockey to confirm that it was in fact an engineer, a member of an ancient humanoid race responsible for humanity's creation. More to the point, Prometheus revealed that the space jockey's elephantine head was actually just a helmet, while the engineer's head underneath was considerably smaller and more humanoid looking. Given that the jockey's helmet in Alien clearly had teeth and a tongue though, this was dismissed by most fans as a flimsy, inattentive retcon at best. Considering the sloppy state of the Alien franchise's continuity, some have simply chosen to believe that the engineers are a separate race descended from the space jockeys, hence their different appearance and seemingly smaller style stature. In reality though, it's just inconsistent world building. Number 3. Leatherface's New Backstory – Leatherface 2017's low-budget, eponymously titled Leatherface prequel wasn't exactly a movie that many Texas Chainsaw Massacre fans were clamoring for, because was anyone really that interested in learning how Leatherface became a chainsaw-wielding maniac? Well, this movie went and did it anyway. Leatherface's big hook is that it's effectively a whodunit where the audience has to figure out which of the film's four escaped mental patients will in fact become Leatherface. Ultimately, it ends up being Jackson, who was revealed to be a member of the Sawyer family, Jedediah, who turns murderously insane after his face is wounded by a bullet fired by Texas Ranger Hal. Jed's mother, Verna, responds by stitching his face, fitting him with a muzzle, and handing him a chainsaw to slaughter both the police officer and a kidnapped victim, Elizabeth. Jed then creates a mask out of their faces, and just like that, Leatherface is born. Except fans of the franchise found this to be a profoundly rubbish revision of Leatherface's already loosey-goosey origin story, which had previously been rejigged by numerous sequels, prequels, and requels. Number 2. Jason's Fear of Water – Freddy vs. Jason Freddy vs. Jason introduced a retcon to the mythos of Jason Voorhees that the more casual Friday the 13th fans quickly took as gospel. In the film, Freddy uses Jason's apparent fear of water to get the better of him when he's dreaming. Yet despite Jason drowning at Camp Crystal Lake as a young boy, it had never been categorically stated that he actually has a fear of water. The previous films in the series showed Jason going near or venturing directly into water on numerous occasions, so for Freddy to use water to successfully overpower him really didn't make that much sense. While fans have tried to make sense of it by suggesting that Jason is scared of drowning, not water itself, hence why he rises out of the water with Freddy's head at the end of the movie, it's much easier to believe that the screenwriters simply didn't do their homework and revisit the previous Friday the 13th movies. Either way, it's a bizarre retcon that left many of the franchise's fans deeply, deeply irritated. And number 1. The Ring Curse is actually a virus. Spiral 
The original Japanese version of the ring, Ringu, made it flatly clear that the deadly videotape which kills its viewers seven days after watching it was part of a curse. But the first sequel, Spiral, which was released the very same day as Ringu in Japan, surely broke the world record for fastest retcon in movie history, when it revealed that the curse wasn't a curse at all, but a virus. Now, to be completely fair to Spiral, the virus revelation first appeared in the 1995 novel upon which the film is based, and while it is a faithful enough adaptation of the source material, it runs entirely counter to Ringu, which committed to the curse being a supernatural force. Ultimately, while Ringu was a major critical and commercial hit, Spiral was a flop that audiences simply rejected, resulting in the next movie, 1999's Ring 2, ignoring it and serving as a direct sequel to Ringu, which makes no mention of it being a virus. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 horror movie retcons that everybody hated. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Instagram and Twitter, where it's at RetroJ, but the O is a zero, and I hope to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope that you're treating yourself well with love and respect, my friend, because you deserve all the best things in life, all right? And don't let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. You are a massive ledge, and I want you to go out there and smash it today. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.